Hey, hello everybody, Stuart here from Stubu Gaming, playing Outriders demo today. Now, I've been playing this for quite a while. Um, I could have released a video on launch day, which was the 25th, um, but I wanted to get more used to the controls and various other aspects of the game before I did so. Um, main reason for that is, for obvious reasons, I wanted to make sure that what I was doing um, actually... Uh, made sense and was correct as far as the world's concerned um, nothing worse than somebody basically releasing a video when the game is so new that they've got no experience in it whatsoever um, the only time that ever works of course is if they're literally doing a live stream uh, where you're all learning together Okay, so I'm playing a new class. I do have a Devastator who has completed the story. Um, I do have a, I think it's Technomancer who's just started. It's completed this section, but um, hasn't finished the uh, the game by any stretch of the imagination. And also there is a um, Trickster. Um, that is available um, and I haven't actually started a character on that yet at all so so this is the Pyromancer uh, I'm playing with at the moment I will cut across to my Devastator at some point just to show you a bit more of the uh, later game stuff but um as you can see, it's. Let, let's cover it off first. Everyone was saying that this was going to be another Destiny type game. Well, I can say without a shadow of a doubt this is not a Destiny type game at all. Um, in fact, I would go as far as to say it's nothing like Destiny. There's not one single thing that I would say is the same, if I'm being honest. Get this, um, get this chest because it does have items in it which are always useful. Just like any game like this, loot is a big part of it, so it is a looter shooter um, in the same vein as things like Anthem, Destiny, and The Division. What I would say though is that this is probably closer to Mass Effect and The Division than it is Anthem, and that's without a doubt. Um, I mean, it's not first person for a start. It doesn't have any of the same sort of um, gameplay mechanics as um, Destiny. There's, in fact, there's actually no um, there's actually no jumping in this game at all, um, which did surprise me when I first watched it. Uh, that's healed me a bit. So when I first played it, sorry, um, it did surprise me that there is absolutely no jumping. Um, it's very much a case of Mass Effect style. You can um, basically vault over things, so press circle to vault over them, X to get into cover. But again, as I said, there's, there's actually no physical jumping, so you can't press X to jump or anything like that, it just does not work. Right, the reason why I like to add pyro to them is because, ooh, that was interesting. Um, yeah, when I add pyro to people, um, I actually get a health boost when I kill them. So as you can see, my health goes up once I've killed them. So I always do try and prefer to add that um, healing damage that damage over time to them. Now if I kill him, there you go, got a bit of health back again. I do like that melee attack. That is nice. Probably one of the best melee attacks there is. 
Oh, everything's going all wobbly. Shoot him in his leg. Right, got him. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go and cut to adding fire to him for a start. A couple of times, killing him, get some health back. So yeah, I'm gonna cut to my devastator so we can at least see um, the other character types. Oh, don't want to get killed by that grenade. Guy's having a bad day. Oh, that's not good. Could I actually get hurt by fire? That's an interesting concept. Right, so, as I've said a couple of times, let's cut to the other character. Right, so I'm now in game with my Devastator, um, and there are a few things that I do want to point out. So, firstly, graphically, um, I was actually expecting more. Now, this is the PS5 version of the game. Um, PS4, I'm not sure how that stacks up because I, I haven't got a copy of that. But as you can see at the bottom of his coat, it's clipping through his leg horrifically. Now, there is no reason for that on modern day consoles. The amount of physics that they have with coats and everything moving as you're running along. The, the fact that on this particular game your legs literally clip through the bottom of your coat as though it's a static object is a bit of an oddity. Um, I would have expected physics to be a much bigger part of uh, the clothing in the game. Um, I mean you do have like smoke effects but as you get closer they tend to disappear um, almost as though it can't render it that close and as soon as you move away they come back. It there are some issues. Now, does it detract from the game or the gameplay? Not at all. Um, is it just a, a strange situation with modern hardware? Definitely. Uh, whether it's the same on PC, I cannot answer that question. Um, but if it isn't, then it does beg the question as to why um, PlayStation 5 and possibly Xbox Series consoles have these problems as well. Um, now you don't seem to have any ray tracing um, again which potentially you could say that there's a performance mode or a resolution mode but as I'm looking at it at the moment there doesn't appear to be so going into the menu there doesn't appear to be anything for uh, resolution etc you've got HDR um, but that's the only real video sort of um, yeah, there just doesn't seem to be anything else. Um, so yeah, there are these things are a little bit odd. But I brought the Devastator in to show you a bit more of the end game gameplay. So obviously this is actually the first. It, it's not a city. It's the first town you kind of come to um, after the prologue, and it's basically the hub so you have a starting hub a bit like the tower in destiny a bit like the normandy in mass effect uh, or indeed your i can't remember what it's called but in uh, the division you also have a uh, a building in uh, well in the division one it was in washington um, new york obviously it was in washington in the division two but yeah it's um it's basically your hub where you find all the shops, your quest givers, etc, etc. Um, there's not much to it, at least not in the demo, but hopefully they're going to add quite a bit more to it once the game's fully released. Um, 
the demo actually ends when you're about to travel to your first major city so let's actually have a look at the gameplay so textures wise the textures aren't too bad um, the sound quality is okay as well uh, lip syncing and voice acting uh, the voice acting is fine but the lip syncing is terrible um, whether that's just something that they can easily fix I would imagine it would be but um, wow that would have blown my eardrums um, but as it stands that's that is still poor um, now some interesting gameplay mechanics you might find some glowing things stuck in rock faces while you're out and about um, you can actually harvest those they are iron ore um, and they will I'm assuming become part of the crafting situation now in the demo crafting is not a thing um, so I can't actually go into whether or not that would would be true uh, in fact here we go there's some over here so this stuff here for some strange reason it glows here but we get that there we go, 62 times iron. But yeah, I mean, from a, a design perspective, we've got a lot of um, sandbagged areas which give great cover and some would argue are a little bit um, immersion breaking because why would you have lovely placed items like this? To be honest, in a war zone, I can see that happening more and more as people knock things over to hide behind and stack up sandbags overnight so they can get closer to the enemy lines. Frontline warfare would actually be quite similar to that. Um, now, if you're talking guerrilla warfare, which people are more used to these days, then definitely not. You you wouldn't have that sort of thing because it would all be sneak attacks rather than an entrenched warfare. But this does fit with the narrative of the game as it's started, at least. Um, I am a bit disappointed there's not more fighting large creatures or even seeing large creatures. Um, the only thing I've really seen apart from one cutscene in effect is um, humanoid characters, um, which isn't great, but there we go. That That's what the demo is giving us. Um, it is quite linear, so if we were to open up the map, which we have to do by going through the menu as far as I can tell... Um, go to quest map so we've got all of these areas here so the town is this part here that's not shaded out with the cross hatches cross hatches are out of the town area so this in the bottom left hand corner is the only town sec section I've just gone down here this is where I crossed over all of the um, battlefield and then I've mo moved my way to here so I could go up to the shattered front which if I look up is going to be over there that's the shattered front so hopefully um, you can use the nap to navigate slightly but to be honest I'm not really sure there's a lot of things that don't seem to make that much sense you can't jump at all as I mentioned in the first bit so I can't jump across that gap no matter what I try the only way to get over there is to have an active quest um, which again is a bit of an odd design choice it's very limiting on where you can go and where you uh, are restricted to um, and the only way to actually find more enemies to kill is, after you've cleared an area of course is to pick up an older um, quest so redo the starting quests and basically that's all you can do um, with characters that have finished the main story so you can go through and you can find and I suppose redo um, previous side quests so you can't redo as far as I can see you cannot redo main story quests so again gameplay wise um, from the intro you probably saw I wanted to show you some late game gameplay but unfortunately I'm actually not able to um, I can show you sort of some powers um, like my shockwave I can show you my armor which basically just adds a load of rock to me um, which is quite funny but yeah after a certain amount of time it does all fall off 
but it just disappears it doesn't crumble away so it almost gets absorbed into you which again is a bit odd but the last one the, the one that i really like using i can't actually show you because i have no enemies to kill um it is a shame actually i could go and try and find a previous mission that i've done um which would then allow me to basically repeat the mission <laughs> um and I do know where there is one, so I might do that. It's just up here. But yeah, I'm, I'm still shocked by the fact that your legs can pass through your body. It's a, it's a very odd decision that one. Right, I'll skip the, I'll skip all the story stuff, simply, uh, simply because I don't want to uh, spoil anything for anybody. Right, so where is it? Where is it? There it is. I knew it was one of them. Bring me that faster, Ted. Again, a little cutscene plays out. So they have linked the loading with cutscenes, but it does fade to black and then start again. Um, I think they could have probably much better tied the two together. So if we use this, I can then highlight people in the world and just dive forward and... Uh, You do kind of uh, do quite a fair bit of damage doing that one, to be fair. Right, and I get, I actually get health by um, being close up to enemies when I kill them. So as soon as they've got that skull with a little green plus next to them, they are ripe for the killing, I suppose. What have I got? No, I haven't thought for a second I was close enough but I wasn't well, little areas like this where people can come out of but there's absolutely nothing inside them so if I'm being honest I'm su I, I suppose I'm a little bit disappointed in what you're able to do in this game um, I thought it was going to be a much bigger scope game than it actually is right there we go pop him from there there we go and I'll smack him one and smack you one as well there we go get rid of him I have got ice on my weapon that's why you can uh, kind of see the the freezing system going off don't you punch me it's rude so yeah I have cryo on my actual weapon I think it does it on a critical hit, but I can't be 100% sure. Right, so pick up the item and the card to open the door. But yeah, there we go. That I'm going to uh, basically leave this gameplay there, because I've shown you the, the abilities. Um, I don't particularly want to spoil too much of the actual story for you guys, so I'm going to leave this part there what i am going to do in the uh, in the near future is i'll probably go through and do a little bit of an overview on all of the different classes um once i've got them all up to a top level um so this guy is not top level but he has got the three different skills unlocked i'm not actually sure what maximum level you can get to on the demo um I would have thought it would have been uncapped, to be honest, but I might be wrong. But as you can see from the items, I suppose this is the only part which reminds me slightly of Destiny, the way they've done the um, equipment menu. But nothing else is the same. Um, in fact, I'll go as far as to say they're very, very different types of games. Um, but yeah, this, this menu does have that kind of clinical feel to it that Destiny has. Um, the character does look... Uh, the way it's in between everything else does look a little bit uh, Destiny-ish as well. But I think that's where any comparison could ever be drawn. Um, 
so yeah it's um it's not quite what people believed was going to be released i think is the is the the point there so what do I actually think of the game? Now, from what I've played so far, I'm enjoying it, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's quite as big a game as we were hoping for. And I don't mean by content-wise, I just mean for um, polish and, you know, is this the next big thing in looter shooters? Um, I have a, a feeling it's not going to be very dissimilar in scope and ability and things like mass effect or um the division um even anthem to a certain extent i think the loot is probably a bit better but again during the demo we don't get to see what the end game is like so that's what's going to make or break this game so when it does come out i will be doing a video um a first look at the released version of the game but I will also be doing an end game analysis as soon as I get a character to that stage. But I am enjoying it, as I say. Um, it is quite good fun. The gunplay feels nice. The classes are very, very different. Um, you all have a different healing ability. So the Devastator is getting close and kill stuff and you will heal. Uh, Pyromancer is you will heal if you kill something that is affected by one of your marks, as in by burning. Um, some of the others will give you health by keeping at range. So they, they all have a different healing ability, but they've all got very different play styles as well. If you were to run in with the Trickster or the Technomancer, for instance, the chances are you'll last about three seconds, whereas this guy can take a hell of a lot of punishment. But that's the whole point of the Devastator. He is the tank who protects his allies. So you do have roles, and that is probably the main um, shining light on this so far. If they manage to implement the class system and the role system correctly, it will put it squarely in the realm of a replayability because you will then be able to squad up with your team and have a role to play, which is always useful. So cautiously optimistic um i do like it as i say graphically it could be better um they need to fix things like the uh, physics on these coats the fact that in this day and age your legs do just pop through it without moving the cloak at all is just weird i mean even games like diablo and inquisitor Marta can come up with uh physics based cloth so you would think a game of this nature um would be able to do it as well um so yeah, the, there are a few things that are needing to be fixed, but none of them are game-breaking. Um, there are little annoyances, so I think they should be fine. But I'm going to leave this particular video there. Well guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please make sure you do click the like button. Subscribe if you are new to the channel or if you haven't done so already. Share the video with all of your friends and please do leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of the video and anything else you'd like to see in the future. If you want to support me more, please follow the link to the Patreon page. It's displayed on screen and I look forward to seeing you for my next video very soon. You'll take care. Bye for now.